Hey guys, uh, I got another controller here for review. This is out of China. This is from uh, QS Motor. Um, the link is in the description. This one retails for about uh, $58 US, which is pretty good for the size of it. Uh, to give you a general idea of the size, this is a 500 to 1000 watt, and this is a 350 watt. So it's pretty chunky. This one is uh, 24 amp. This one is about 35 amp to 40. And this one is 80 to 100 amp. Um, it actually does come with, well, you can buy Bluetooth with it. Unfortunately, the description uh, on their uh, AliExpress website is a little misleading. And uh, if you scroll down, you'll notice that it says you can purchase it separately. So that's where it would go there. So I'm going to end up purchasing it. It's about $30, probably $40 shipped, which kind of blows. But I'll make a second part to this video and we'll go over the uh, software. I already got the software. I asked the guy for the software. I'm surprised he didn't ask me if I wanted the, the dongle. I guess he figured I had one. But um, anyway, yeah, this is uh, 72 volts, 80 amp, 2000 watt. So yeah, we're going to actually open it up and uh, check the components. This is fresh out of the factory, by the way. We're going to check the components on the inside to see what the maximum voltage is on this. We'll check the FETs and uh, the capacitors and see what we got. Yeah, I'm not too sure what it's going to take to break into this thing. It's got a lot of uh, silicone on the, um, the bottom there. So we'll start with the top. So I was a little disappointed when it didn't come with the Bluetooth. But like I said, we'll uh, make another video on that. Like you can still use it without, but uh, I would like to adjust the... the uh, you can adjust all kinds of stuff on it. Not just the amp draw, you can, draw, you can adjust the uh, startup. How much the motor pulls and everything else, so... I don't think we have to remove the black back plane. It's just this one here. A lot of silicone on those screws, which is good. I don't have to worry about silicone because I never really get caught out in the rain. I like go out in the nice days. Yeah, these uh, phase wires are super thick. I think the thickest phase wires I've ever seen on the controller yet. So I'm sure I'll be getting bigger ones eventually, but uh, that's nice and thick. Okay, it's going to take the break into this thing. Like I said, it's got silicone all the way through it, which isn't a bad thing. I've opened up a lot of controllers that needed it. Yikes. Yeah, it's pretty thick. Let me break into this thing and uh, we'll get back. Well, if you guys managed to break into this thing, all the uh, container is totally silicone, so I'll have to scrape that all off. Uh, there's no rubber seal that you can reuse. Um, the actual board inside is smaller than the whole heat sink itself, which is not a bad thing, I guess. But uh, one thing I did notice is if you look inside there, the heat sink compound is not very, very flat, so it's not going to transfer the heat very well to the heat sink. Well, I'm going to change that. I'm going to level it out and. Uh, Maybe put some more paste on it. It's not enough. But as you can see, it's there's not a lot of surface area there that's going to take advantage of this huge heat sink. So, anyway, uh, as you can see, the build quality is nice. They got really, really, really chunky, thick copper 
uh, traces all the way around. The bottom side, thick traces going right to the board. Nice, very nice. I wouldn't want to have to change the uh, the the fets in it though. Um, I'm gonna try and find the number on the fet and see what the maximum voltage is. The caps are rated for 100 volts, and there's three of them, and they're in parallel. So that's pretty good actually. It can take a hell of a load. Like if it was just two. Probably go 109 in this, this controller, no problem, and you won't have to worry about blowing those up. Uh, what else? Don't see the rectifier or the voltage regulator. There's the shunt. Sputtered up nicely. Uh, okay, we'll see. So I'm gonna go see if I can get the somehow get the number off one of those fets, and then we'll uh, look up the. Uh, See what the uh, make is the model. Okay, so it's the K150E09NE. Uh, comes up 150 amps at 100 volt. So you should be able to run this at 100 volt, no problem. Um, the caps and everything all pass. So if you don't, I, I say the maximum might go over is maybe 109, but uh, I think I might just run it at 90. I don't think I'm gonna need more than that. Uh, I figured I'd share that with you. Like I'm going to lap this aluminum here and uh, re um, put uh, paste on it. See if it gets better uh, surface uh, matting on there. That's not that good. That's terrible, actually. If you look in there, it looks like the only place it was actually uh, making contact is around the screws. I think it's because they siliconed before they put the screws in, and the silicone has pushed the uh, aluminum away from the other aluminum. I'll be out there scraped off. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yep, that is silicone. That's got to be all scraped off. So it's got a nice surface there because it's not even making a contact in the middle. This is just for show. This thing would burn out. So, anyway, I figured I'd show that with you. Show that to you. Um, be nice for over volting and uh, modding. I'll let you take care of this the heatsink problem, and uh, I'll do a second video with the um, the dongle, and we'll uh, go into programming later, guys.